is spectacular up here right now. Beautiful layers of fog just kind of dancing across these hills and the sun is super low on the horizon. It's right before sunset so we get that nice light just kind of striking the fog in the hills. A little windy right now though so a bit tough to do long exposures so right now I'm just doing some shorter exposures and then I might do a time lapse as well. So here's the scene and it's just beautiful and there's so many things to pick out here. I mean, you know, if I go in here and zoom in, you can just see these beautiful tree lines peeking out through the clouds. You can create these little islands in the fog. You know, I think this would make for an interesting composition right here. I'm gonna try this out. Now, before we dive into this sunset shoot, I just want to show you a few images that I captured earlier in the day. I thought this image was a nice change of pace from my usual sunset fog photographs and I captured this one just a little bit earlier from a different part of the mountain. I really liked the way the fog was moving here and you could see previously in that time lapse the way the fog was just floating through this area creating these two islands of trees. But my favorite part of this image specifically is that one lone tree that you can see down towards the bottom right. I felt like that just balanced out this image perfectly. This image was shot at about 100 millimeters and is a single exposure. So along with my digital images, I decided to capture a bit of film up there on the mountain as well. So these are 35 millimeter with the Nikon FE camera at about 105 millimeters and I'm shooting a roll of Portra 400. I have a few more 35 millimeter film images spread throughout this video and they're just a blast to shoot. And I'll definitely be having more dedicated film photography videos here on the channel in the future. crazy how many different things there are to shoot right now. I mean, every second the fog changes and creates new opportunities for compositions and different shapes revealed. And uh, as usual, I'm having just a lot of fun with the Sigma 100 to 400 lens and just kind of picking off shots in the distance. I mean, it's really my favorite thing to do. I'm just waiting for the fog to get into the right spot. It's a little patchy here. I want to try a long exposure, but it's just, I don't know if you can hear, it is so windy right now. And uh, I feel like if I do a long exposure, I'm really going to need to block the wind, get really low. So I feel like doing the shorter exposure is a little bit easier right now. It's allowing me to do more compositions and, and find more things. The top hill is, is pretty blocked by a layer of fog. So really, it's just about playing the waiting game. So as that fog started swirling around the scene, more islands of trees were getting revealed out in the distance. And I decided to shift my composition over a bit. And the light on top of the fog right now, just that, that nice, soft, warm light is incredible. All right, I think the fog is in the perfect spot. Just waiting for the fog to move over a little bit further. There we go. That looks perfect.
I thought this image was really, really cool. The fog out there in the distance just looked like little flames. And there's a ton of mimicking patterns in this image. If you can look at all the different layers from the top layer of fog to the little layer of trees, the little island of trees in the middle, and even in the trees down towards the bottom of the image, you can see all of these V shapes right towards the middle of each layer. And I thought that element made for a really nice flow to this image. decided to set up a time lapse with the 100 to 400 lens. Definitely one of my favorite types of light to shoot in is right after sunset. You get those soft pastel colors and you can see these these layers of trees down towards the bottom of the composition. Just those nice reds in the sky matched with the cooler tones of the fog. The fog has such a nice shape right now too. It's just pouring down and then swirling right before the tree line. I think this is gonna make for a really interesting time lapse. I'm gonna do the same settings as before, probably just a, a one second interval for this one. Actually, you know what, just to see, let's kind of zoom in here. See, that looks interesting too, but I think that it's a lot more interesting when you include the pastel sky. So that's what we're gonna do here. After shooting that time lapse, I drove back down the mountain, but I decided to head back up the next day and witness some pretty incredible moments. Here's an image at 400 millimeters close up of that little fog waterfall pouring into this tiny bit of trees where you can just see the little tops of the trees and their shadow. This of course is a shorter exposure so you do see all of the texture. Let me show you one more image of a similar composition that was shot with a longer exposure. I didn't go too long to blur out the entirety of the fog. I still wanted to see a little bit of the texture and movement, but in this long exposure, you can see some of the light rays coming through the trees, and it really does help to simplify the movement. I'd be really curious to hear which one of these images you prefer more. Do you like this longer exposure that really blurs out and simplifies the fog, or do you enjoy the shorter exposure that shows all of that texture? please let me know in the comments. Here's another long exposure this time, pulled back a bit to reveal more of the scene, more of the tree lines, and just some incredible movement of fog throughout this image. So just a bit earlier, when the sun was a little higher in the sky, I shot this exact same frame, or almost this exact same frame, with my 35 millimeter film camera, and here's how that shot turned out.
here are the last moments before that sunball just dipped below the horizon and I managed to shoot this image right here with a little bit of movement and still a bit of texture in there as well but the those incredible sunset pastel colors were spectacular to witness in person and just a joy to capture here in camera. Here's one more 35 millimeter film image taken right before that sun dipped below the horizon. You can see it's just this tiny little line up there. These moments above the fog, for me, they, they really transcend far beyond just photographs and a photography adventure. I mean, these moments above the fog have, in a sense, over the course of my life been kind of like therapy. You know, I've grown up here in California my entire life, and the coastal fog has always been a part of my life. It feels like the fog just kind of follows me around. And anytime I'm having a really tough day, tough week, tough month, or even just a really rough, tough year, these little moments above the fog kind of help me to alleviate a lot of the stress in my daily life and kind of just have a separation from that. And I know a lot of you as photographers take pictures for this reason. It's, it's this kind of therapy, it's this healing process that you have. And especially with, with the fog, it, it feels like that because you're standing atop this just sea of clouds. And it's almost as if, for me, I'm leaving all my problems and my troubles down there in the city and I can kind of just relax and be myself and enjoy the moment. And that's with or without the camera. Now, usually I have the camera with me, but there's countless amount of times where I'll just go up the mountain without my camera and just sort of enjoy the experience of watching the fog drift in from the sea. The fact that I'm able to take you guys on a few of these fog adventures really does mean a lot and I appreciate you watching and joining the adventure with me. As always, I really appreciate you watching the video. If you haven't already, give the video a thumbs up, helps me out a lot, and subscribe to the channel for more. And yeah, I'll catch you in the next one.